What's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I just got over here to the shop. We're at Brian's. We're in a race car again. I think I have a pretty good idea what the problem is with this thing. Let me show you. But first, before we get into it, I need to get the intake off of it. Go to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some merchandise. Don't forget, November 26th, Backwards Brawl happening in Knoxville. And I still have a few connecting rods on our website. If you want something for a stocking stuffer, head over to turbojohnracing.com. Thanks, guys. Guys, so the intake is off of it, so pretty sure what the problem is, and I talked about it a little bit, oil drain back, but it's not necessarily an oil drain back issue. If you look, this motor has got an oil drain back hole up there, an oil drain back hole there, oil drain back here, and then the same thing on this side. That is the only places that the oil can drain back on this motor. This Brodix block, this, is the main feed. So the oil comes in the block in the back, comes up, goes through here, and then somehow gets down to the mains in each one of them and then feeds the actual camshaft as well. So the problem is a couple things. These motors are normally run on a dry sump. So you have a crankcase ventilation down on the pan. It's sucking, it's a scavenge. And you also have scavenge happening from up here. So what's happening on this one, if you think about it, when you turn an oil container upside down or drink it goes glunk, 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 it glumps and so the crankcase pressure in the bottom of the motor the crankcase has nowhere to vent other than these four holes there's nowhere where it can come up so what is happening is the oil is gulping to go down into the drains and now think about it too now we put restrictors in the top but all the oil in these heads you got your oil drain back hole over there and guess where it goes? It goes right to the lifter valley. And so everything is in the lifter valley. So all the oil in the top of the motor goes to the lifter valley and then it has to get back to the sump, the oil pan by one of these four holes. Now, so we got a couple of solutions. Uh, there's nowhere to drill in here. And I done a bunch of reading last night online and Yellow Bullet, this is a common problem when they take these blocks and they try to go wet sump instead of dry sump. Yellow Bullet, there were several people that had this same exact issue uh, several years ago, many years ago. One, one of the threads was from 2005. So this is not the first time this has happened. This is the first time it's happened to me because we've never messed with it. And you can see the oil is still, there's lots of spots for this oil to get stuck and hung up in the top of the motor. So if you can imagine this thing's flooding, it's all trying to get, get back and it's trying to go through here. Um, we're going to take these screens off on the back. I already took them off on the front. I should have went ahead and took them off in the back, but I didn't. So we got to figure out how to get those things out of there. We got to figure out how to get air from the crankcase up. Now I was looking online. One of the solutions is the fuel pump, the old fuel pump mount down there. I can either weld a fit in there or I can take and uh, weld a fit on that one or buy the billet aluminum when it's already got it on it, run that up to my catch can or run it to my vent that is in the top of the valve cover. Back here in the back, this plug right here, which is gonna be very difficult to get to, but that's a TNA in, that also goes down to the crankcase. And if you're running dry sump, that's what they actually recommend. They recommend that port right there, the blue one, to actually be a scavenge out. And so that is something that is possible, but we'll have to move the dipstick tube, which I don't know if that's a good possibility or not. So Brian's over here with me. He's gonna help me get this, uh, get the epoxy out. That's gonna help tremendously by taking these screens out. I mean, you know, the screen is, it's pretty tight mesh. I mean, it's not super, super tight, but we gotta get those out. But see how the screen caught some silicone there. But so we think that's the problem. Let me show you the dart block real fast. So if you go on Dart's website, if you go on Dart's website, they say that if you have a, a their block aluminum, or steel, that if you're gonna be wet sump, you've gotta do this. See the stand pipes? The stand pipes don't have any oil that actually comes back through them. It's only air from the crankcase. But then I also drilled that hole, that hole, that hole, and that hole. So none of those holes were there from the factory. And so we drilled them. And so that's why we've never had any issues out of this one over here. 
Here is the solution. This is the fuel pump where the fuel pump normally goes way up in there. That is the camshaft. But this goes to the crankcase. This goes to the bottom of the motor. It is down in there somewhere. So with this, we're gonna put, uh, we're gonna weld a fitting on to the plate and then we're gonna run it up to the catch can. There's an oil drain back hole there because oil is gonna fill this cavity up for sure. It won't fill it, but it'll get some. But this will just give us another vent so that hopefully the air in the bottom of the motor can go up. Now they, they, they make a plate that has a number 12 that they say you can hook a vacuum pump to. We don't have a vacuum pump currently. We may end up having to get one. We may end up, I mean, possibly I need to start looking, maybe converting this thing over to a uh, external, converting it over to an external drive. I don't know if I necessarily want to do that, but we may end up having to do that. So I don't know. I was just looking up there. The head gasket stuff looks fine. No issues there. Uh, I don't know, guys. I think that's the solution. Uh, back here, everything looks fine. Um, there are no plugs missing. It seems like everything is fine with the oil flow. Maybe just the screen. Uh, the screen's on the back, not letting it go back. You saw all the ledges in the intake. There's a lot of ledges in there. So when you have that kind of ledges and that kind of trap, uh, we got a seven core oil pan. You figured all the lines and the actual uh, filters, at least a quart. So that's eight quarts. And then you figure the top of the motor, just in the ledges is going to hold probably a half a quart to a quart. So when we change oil, we're going to do nine quarts. I think we're going to do it. I uh, had a bunch of people reach out to me. I appreciate the help. Uh, give some advice. One of the things was checking the, the pickup tube for some cracks. I checked that. There's no cracks there that I can see. We are going to change the oil pump as well. We're going to go ahead and put a new oil pump on that. Uh, I did adjust the distributor height a little bit. I was able to move that down a little bit, but the, the holes in the back were not... Uh, not not covered up. So, I mean, if you Google search low air oil pressure with a small block Chevy aluminum block on Yellow Bullet or Google, uh, you'll find a bunch of threads. And this is apparently pretty common. I wish I would have done that search prior to uh, figuring it out now. But I'm pretty sure that's why we killed the other motor, uh, you know, the, the other crankshaft, the small stroke. You know, we wiped out the main bearings and makes sense, uh, makes perfect sense. We wiped it out because the oil was not getting back to, to the bottom. And, and that's why I can see the oil pressure kind of fluctuating back and forth, um, you know, on that last pass, especially. So, uh, but we, you know, didn't know why, but I think we figured out the why is we got to get the, the air out of the crankcase. All right, guys, well, that's the plan. That's what we're going to do. Uh, Danny and them has got another bearing. So I'm gonna go grab that tomorrow night. So we'll clean all that back up, put the main cap back on it, put the bearing in it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this, get this run. And then uh, we're gonna get the screens out of it real fast. Not gonna show you getting the screens out because I imagine that's gonna be a while. It's probably gonna be pretty boring on video, but the screens in the back of the block are coming out for sure. And hopefully we will have success, success. That's the game, the game plan. You know guys, one other thing that may be a sign that we have a lot of oil in the intake valley here. Look how wet this gasket is. Now, honestly, I had never paid attention on my other motor when I pulled the other motor apart a million times. But I don't know if that's normal or not. Now that is, no, I mean that's that goes up to about like right here. So uh, yeah, I don't know, but surely the the lifter valley was not that full. I mean, I guess it's possible if you got all the steam trying to come up out of the bottom, all the exhaust gases. I don't know. We'll see. All right, guys, comment, like, and subscribe. We'll see y'all soon. I'll let you know how it goes later.